This is something that happened long ago and I didn't think much of it but I guess I'm in a spooky mood and got a feeling of dread when I remembered it. Be me. 7 yo, can't remember exactly age, parents were renovating house so we went to a carpenter they know to discuss new furniture, don't remember how but I met this girl my age outside and she convinced me to go to the dance with her, sure.png, we start walking together and we get to the train rails, start walking across the rails, after a while we're out of town and I only see fields, like the retard I am I finally realize something is off, uh where are we going? To the dance of course, I tell her I changed my mind and promptly return back. But being young I got lost in town, thankfully I went to a shop and said can you take me back to mom and these people have me in orange juice and somehow found my parents the memory is vague but I vividly remember the sight of the fields along the empty train rails. I wonder where the hell that girl was going. Childhood memories can be quite scary. Be me, 18, at the grandparents cabin in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, staying alone until family arrives on the afternoon of the next day, middle of winter, blizzard outside several feet of snow, minus 30 degrees celsius, oh yeah I'm a fucking leaf by the way, balls freezing off.png, at night a huge blizzard blows in, outside is so dark it looks like a void, thought of nothing but empty frozen forest for miles outside that window unsettles me, close the blinds, blinds are poorly fitted to the window, no matter where I'll pull them there's always a small gap, oh well, sit on the sofa by the window reading and trying to forget about how isolated I am and how unsettling the gap between the curtains is, fall asleep on the sofa, book in hand, wake up in the morning, dim light pouring in through the window, been blizzarding on and off all night, open blinds again, more comfortable since it's day, can see footprints in the front yard, fuckles this shit.png, go outside expected to see their moose or deer, human tracks, bare feet no shoes, Tracks started to fill from snow and probably happened sometime in the night. Tracks lead right up to my window, at the gap in the blinds looking in. Tracks don't lead away from the house, the other end of the tracks start in the middle of the fucking field like this guy appeared out of nowhere mid-stride to this day I don't know how those tracks got there, but the nearest neighbor is nearly 2 kilometers down the road. It was minus 30 out with a few feet of snow, anyone going around barefoot would start losing toes after just a few minutes of being out there. I don't go to that cabin alone anymore. Have friends over, tell them to sleep over, they tell me that they can summon a demon named Natsabad, Teresa Ritual Shippy.png, Step 1, Perform Ritual on a Rainy Night, Step 2, Hot Tea with Milk and Sugar Placed on a Counter under a Mat with 3 Pokemon Cards and a Paperclip, Step 3, Draw a Picture of the Demon in your Image and Place it on the Wall near the Ritual Mat, Step 4, Make Sure the Mat is in the Light of a Window, Step 5, Sleep near the mat with gray sleep mask on, we perform the steps and go to sleep, wake up, friends are dead, my tea's gone cold and wondering why, I got out of bed at all, the morning rain clouds up my window, and I can't see at all, even if I could it would all be gray, but your picture on my wall, it reminds me that it's not so bad, it's not so bad. My grandmother passed away yesterday, I don't exactly miss her, she was the kind of woman who thought kids should be seen and not heard, ever. When I was really young I didn't understand why we ever visited her, she didn't have anything for me to play with but she had this huge collections of porcelain dolls I wanted to play with them. But she screamed at me and slapped me. I never tried again after that she's dead now. It's weird to think about. We're spending the night in her house for some reason, me and mom and dad, and my aunt and cousins. Her doll collection is still here, still sitting in that room looking at it now, I can't figure out why I wanted to play with them back then. Their eyes are wide and creepy and not one of them is smiling. They're really freaky looking the funeral is in a few hours, then there's the reading of the will tomorrow. I want to get out of here as fast as I can. There's no door on the room with the dolls and I have to sleep in the room right across from it. I don't know how well I'll be sleeping tonight. The funeral was short and there weren't a lot of people there she didn't get along well with people apparently she was buried with one of her dolls one that looked an awful lot like her same thin wispy hair same color eyes same upturned nose there weren't a lot of tears shed I know I didn't cry. Now we're just sitting around her house awkwardly trying to talk about other things like what's going to happen to her house and her stuff. They're saying it's weird that she had a burial so soon after dying, it usually takes a little longer to get everything set up and none of the family had to pay for it, which saved them a lot of arguments. I'm really, really bored here. I wish I'd brought my Game Boy the sky got dark really fast. It's somehow 10.15 and I have no idea when that happened. I don't exactly want to go to sleep in this house. I discovered that I can't close my door all the way something's wrong with the hinges and it only closes about 3 quarters of the way. This is going to be a long night, I wish they'd stop looking at me.
Why won't they stop staring at me? Their little grins are so eerie, like they know some kind of secret that I don't. Wait. Grins. They never had smiles before. I sit up in my bed and grip a pillow, staring at them. Definitely not going to sleep tonight. Oh oh god. That one's missing an eye. How? Grandma always took good care of them they're breaking. Falling apart. As I watch them. I wanna scream but my throat won't cooperate, and my legs won't move so I can run their grins are so wide now. Wider than their heads can hold. And the teeth. The teeth that grow in them. That one's moving. No 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 stay in there like a good doll, don't come out of that room. Don't come through that doorway. They stopped at the door to their room. I think I understand. She never allowed them to come out of the room. They can't leave without her say so. And she's dead. Ha. Suck on that, you little bastards. I pick up a small knickknack from the bedside table and walk over to the doorway, grinning. I toss up once, catch it, and hurl it at the closest doll, catching it square in the nose. I bounces off of the doll and rolls into the hall, and the doll looks up at me, its grin fading fast. I smirk at a flip it off, and go back to the bed. Fuck them. I'm going to sleep. I woke up this moment to a scream of pain. I threw myself out of bed and grabbed my shoe as a weapon, however useless it may be, and flung open the door to see my mother grabbing her foot and leaning against the wall. She's bleeding. I start to ask what caused it, but then I see the knickknack he threw last night, a teddy bear on a carousel horse, broken and lying under where her foot must have come down. I glance into the doll's room and almost yelp. All of the dolls are normal again, except for one. It's looking dead at me with a small grin. It's the one I hit in the face last night. My mom demands to know if I was the one who put the thing in the hall. I apologize and she yells at me for a bit. After breakfast, we start getting our things together to leave. After the reading of the will, we're going to head back home, and I have never been more relieved the lawyer seems anxious. He doesn't want to read the will, I can tell but he has to he tells us that my grandmother left most of her money to various charities, but each of her kids gets a pretty helly chunk too. My parents are happy about it and I'm hoping maybe they'll finally gel me a car the lawyer clears his throat awkwardly as we stand to leave and we sit back down there's one more thing left he says. For wait. He says it's for me I leave you my doll collection. I give my permission for them to leave the room. You must learn how to care for them for if you do, they will care for you, you don't they will not, either. I hear giggling in the back of my mind. Hey I actually have one to tell that I just remembered. So one day when I'm 12 years old or so my mom sits me down to talk with me after work, really strange. She never does this and it was out of the blue, tells me she has a story about when she was a kid and it's going to sound a bit weird but she has to tell someone, she told her dad but he's since passed away and someone else has to know, anyway, story goes my mom was about my age when she moved into a house with her dad, they were always moving every few years, never staying in one place for too long, this house is older in an old part of town but is pretty nice, mom gets the feeling she's being watched but doesn't tell her dad about it, has many nightmares and has to sleep in bed with her dad a lot but tries to be brave, dad doesn't get a lot of sleep either, mom spends a lot of time home alone because her dad was always busy at work so she would take the day to explore the house and neighborhood and then barricade herself in her father's room at night, waiting for him to come home at midnight or later. During her daytime exploration she becomes obsessed with finding secret passageways as she'd read about them in books and had a dream about one. Behind the fireplace in the living room she finds a panel that's loose, and she pulls it off revealing a door, she opens it and it opens outward, she steps in now this is a part that really hurt her to tell me about. Behind the fireplace it was warm and kind of dark, and there were a few dark alcoves, she's on her hands and knees and looks into one of them and leaned up against the side as a corpse with blood on it. She screams and hits her head on the low ceiling and frantically tries to escape but the door she came in is blocked by something on the outside. She bangs against the door but it hardly budges she's screaming, crying, hyperventilating, my mom is in tears telling this story and she never curls, I'm shaken up she turns around and she sees the outline of the corpse in the dark, still sitting there propped up against the wall, mom can't escape and is certain she's going to die starts hitting her elbows against the wall and even smashes her head against the door, she's absolutely losing it, she is trapped here for hours as the sun goes down and all remaining light disappears, somewhere in there is the corpse, outside she hears the back door unlock and her dad walk inside, she starts screaming and pounding on the door and her dad rushes over to the fireplace, a heavy scraping sound and she shoves the door open and he pulls her out, 
He's absolutely stunned. Mom crying as she points into the hidden room and describes the body to her dad and how she was trapped there she looks over and sees that somehow someone had dragged the safe her dad had in front of the door while she was in without her hearing her dad hugs her tight and grabs a flashlight and crawls into the opening. He shines it around and explores the whole thing, there's no body and he explains that to my mom, she tells him that it was there and he believes her, he tells her he saw something strange once, somehow the corpse had disappeared, he assures her that he will sell the house soon and then they will move out in a week, he closes the door and puts the panel back on nails the door shut, and moves the sail in front of eel. That night the two of them don't sleep grandpa arranges to pick up my mom and bring him to work but one of his asshole managers won't let him bring her on the days he's supervising which is three a week after school one day my mom spends the entire time locked in her dad's room doing homework, she hears a sound of a pop and something unlatches behind her. A penal on the wall next to her father's head had swung open Ikea door and created bitong it hit the wall, mom is scared we curious grabs flashlight and are over the bed to peer into the saka. This doorway is almost as tall and wide as her dad but leads into a short, narrow hallway with some susceptible stars ALS and, she is too scared to explore so she is about to reach for the panel and close it when a pounding on her ather's core starts the door starts shaking as if it's about to give way she runs into the opening and slams the hidden door shut behind her, trapped in darkness save for her flashlight being hears eight crack and the bedroom door breaks open, heavy slow footsteps in the room that pace around the bed and back again, before setting next to the hidden door mom Ellie slowly back up T is at the end of the brothers, this leads her to a crawlspace area above the second floor and she follows one of the paths leading towards her room 589 she goes along she notices ends an opening stone could be out of. Finally she reaches the area above her room and sun her bed in plain view eel someone was up here, they could have easily watched her without her seeing them. The house had or not a woodwork and this peephole was hidden up there somewhere on the molding she's paradised by the fear of it and whatever is in her father's bedroom she stays up there for some time, she said about an hour back door unilocks and her father walks up the stairs to find his bedroom door broken she panics and shorts for my mom she answers him but smulled and she trawls back the way she came, Appen's hidden door and steps out to her shocked father's explains what happened Lou him, he means the passages and is deeply disturbed, that night he uses his job as they won't let him take the right of nowhere for them to stay until the house is sold and there it is freezing cold and snowing out. They call the police to report the intrusion, but the police are busy with other things at the moment and promise to send an officer as soon as possible grandpa decides out of desperation to try spending the night at um neighbors the two of them dress up in wham clothes and gather bags to spend the night by on there's a lure or two of snow out and they walk to the neighbor's house, grandpa knocks on the door but nobody answers, rings the doorbell and no response leases Jew the next Lauza. Dottie wears and Telex crosses the street to try again and tries the Darren houses, both are parking and starting to freeze, they head back to spend the night in his car but when they approach it all the windows have been smashed certified and really leasing, they head back inside grandpa's door is busted so they spend the night in mom's room moves her dresser in front of the door and the locales the peephole and stuffs it full of some cult and the two of course, Navarslan. They take turns reading a book waiting for the sun to rise, until late in the night they hear something scraping against the floor downstairs, it's the safe being pushed along the floor. The two look at each other and grandpa hugs her tightly they both have hours in their eyes and grandpa runs over to grab a knife he had by the table, then they hear the creaking as the thing walks up the stairs and slowly towards mum's room mom is shaking and silently sewing while her dad holds her tight, the thing starts skimming on the door. Absolutely wailing unit grabs mom and over to the window and pull it open and logs halo sits not too big of a full and there's two or three feet of snow built up there grabs my mom and the two of them look at the door as it shakes with each hit, holds her tight and jumps into a snow pile, landing on his feel very hard curses in pain and looks on as a tall crash sard. A figure moves into view and stands by the window, it's the corpse my mother had seen but with new life in it, blood dripping down it, eyes appear to be missing. Just dark sockets, tilts its head to one side and looks down at them, grandpa runs as fast as he can through the snow while carrying my mom, keeps going for blocks and blocks through the shallower snow in the road, eventually he reaches downtown and runs into a 7 to 11, begs the manager and he agrees to let them spend the night in the store, the two fall asleep on the floor in the back office, in the morning, grandpa decides nobody can live in that evil house, returns to his home and torches it, burns down entirely save for the foundation, the fireplace, and the secret room behind the fireplace, all brick, he made it look like an accident and the inspectors buy it, 
Police are a bit suspicious because of the call to the police the night before and the broken glass on his car but decide it's not worth their time, not like he's trying insurance fraud or anything and he's an outstanding citizen. The two move away to live with family after that, grandpa passed away not too long ago. Mom takes me to see the site of the house a week later, somebody had rebuilt it around the brick foundation, she bursts into tears and we drive away, never talks about it again. Now after writing all of this, I have to add that little 12 year old me was very skeptical of the paranormal and even of this. She told the story so well but I had to wonder if she was somehow pulling my leg. She's never done anything like that to me, though. To this day it sounds too much like a movie. Yet she swore to me that it happened and she was so disturbed by it. Okay, X, let's get this over with I have been debating whether to tell this story for a while now. I speaks English with an apology, as it is not my first language. I live in a country called Georgia after school is over one summer and several of my friends decided to go out of town a bit and a bit of adventure travel the weather is beautiful and can be a very hot summer in Georgia Saul and my friends seven them all together, were enjoying long walks. The first few days, it was so much fun drink and smoke, and we were laughing and everybody's having fun. However, we have a friend called Alex, and we were going with that little crazy man not a bad man. But he is not afraid of anything one night we were camping in the forest clearing it's getting dark so we will all go and get some more firewood and I and my friend loke up a knife and go to cut the sticks. We are there because we have been drinking for a while and we get a bit lost and my friend are very frightened and hear rustling in the woods. This is a very dark, to find out what it is exactly but it was coming closer I call out and out comes running out screaming Alex trying to scare us we laugh it off and say, yes, I was so scared I almost cut him. He said that our friends have not seen us for a while and came to find us because they are a little worried about us as he speaks the smell hits me k a punch in the face almost vomiting and ask him why he smells so bad. He tells me that on the way back, he wants to show us something. So, we walked back and I am still confused why it smells so bad about a 10 minute walk we arrive at what looks like a former bunker again. The smell hits me in the stomach, worse than what Alexei smells tears came to my eyes and ask if Alexa came here. He said he did, but even he was scared and went to find with us and come back Lokob is looking at me and says that he is not comfortable, but I want him around because he has the knife and is a very strong man we enter this bunker and it's so dark and so cold but it is also completely silent the smell is getting worse, because we are on our way to the bunker and in the end I have to take off my shirt and cover the nose and mouth to stop the smell as I take off my shirt and wrap it around my face, one of my friends pushing me to the ground and I know they run off laughing. I get up and I see them nowhere but still hear them laughing in the distance I do not see very good for my part in the dark and start trying to find a way back. As I was feeling along the wall I feel my turn to go through something soft my eyes focus on the dark and I just vomit everywhere. I just stuck my hand into the eye of the dead man I look at it further to try and work out why he died, and I can see that around the neck. A dent. I am so confused because I do not see the rope to hang themselves understand that this is a bad smell that I smell. I just try and get back and try and decide not to kill my friends. Lokob still had the knife. So I'm just in a bunker at pitch black and I am calling out to my friends. As I was screaming their names, I hear something. I stop for a moment and it is completely silent and so I ignore it. I walk a few stops and I hear it again. At this time I was really scared and just start running I can still hear the noise frip and fall over and the noise stops I'm scared. I get up and hear the shuffling. It is at this point I realize that noise going on at the same time, I am moving. I take another step in the dark, and yes I understand the two step. One of mine, one of someone else's. I spin around and look behind me, I can not see very far in the distance, but I do not see anyone at all. I take a step back. A moment later my step lands, I hear something else's move on the ground. I was almost crying at this point suddenly, I feel a drip on my shoulder, my shirt off and wrapped around my face touched it and it is sticky, but it is still wet. I am stunned and just stand there for a minute. The distance, I hear footsteps and I think my friends and turn around and take a step forward. This step is the worst I've ever taken my life. I felt cold, wet rope tighten around my neck. I walked straight into a noose and felt being cut up in the air. Now I can hear laughter. Open your mouth and try to laugh, that's what it sounded like. I looked up at the roof and see what haunts me to this day. I can see the outline of what looks like a short, bald man. He was naked, and he is the head of a body. But where his legs start is the mass and then four or five small stumpy legs sprouting out. How he had been gripping on the roof I do not know. 
I understand that it was in his footsteps that have been chasing me. A great big, tongue hangs out of his mouth, and it comes down and wrapped around my neck. I try to pull it off, but the more I pull the more it tightens and yanks me up. I am not sure whether it's laughing loud or I just got closer, but it gets louder and louder. My eyes grow clim and I cannot fight anymore and start to piss myself as a little girl all of a sudden. I hear this terrible screaming and I let loose I heard the footsteps of others before getting stopped up. Lokob was making his way back because he only wanted to scare me, and I will drop badly, because I come from him. He brought the knife and cut the monster tongue, and I saw scuttle off screaming and crying across the ceiling. I ran with Lokob and leave the bunker. I'm so scared. To this day I do not know what it was and I do not want to go back. I gathered all my things and left the camp and walked back the same day, Lokob and knife. It was 12 years ago. Since then I have never spoken to Alexei again, and Lokob hanged himself last June. I'm only writing this story, because my therapist told me that it would be good to write it down and it's off my chest. My friends say that he went back to the cave for a year, but because they are close to the road and it is guarded by the military security forces. I went to try in it recently, but seems to have been blocked off I can still feel it in my neck at night sometimes, XL, so cold. Do you know what a cordyceps is? I didn't either until 20 minutes ago. It's a family of thousands of different types of fungus, grows all around the world in various rainforests and jungles. The awful thing about them is they're parasitic, they grow on other animals. An ant happens to run into some spores, and then it starts to colonize his insides, starting with his brain. At some point, the ant starts to act visibly ill, standing in place and shivering, or walking in circles. If a fellow colony member sees him in this condition, he will be dragged to the border of the colony and exiled. Then, when it's almost over, the ant weakly climbs as high as he can up the vines, and locks his body on tight. Finally, he dies, and the fungus emerges from the back of his head, bursting forth like a long and foul fruit. After a short time, the little stalk spews forth its own spores, leaving the mummified and broken ant clinging to the stalk, his eye cavities filled with drying fungus. I mention this because last night when I was up on the roof of my apartment complex, I found my brother's body. He's been back from 18 months on duty in the Philippines for less than three days. This was the first I'd seen him. My parents called me up the day before yesterday to tell me that he was on his way up. They told me he'd stayed in his room since he got home, and then suddenly got up and announced he was on his way to see me. They thought he was drunk, I thought he'd never made it. He must have come straight up to the roof and died, by the smell of it. I was just finishing a cigarette, all tum up with anxiety and head throbbing, and when the acrid smoke vanished I caught a whiff of rot on the hot wind. It took me just a few minutes before I'd found him, face down behind the vents and fans. A slimy gray column rose up obscenely from the base of his skull, and a frozen waterfall of roots and tendrils was dangling from his eye sockets and mouth. At the top of stock was small arrangement of feathery wisps, a white powder drift in powder drifting idly from its tips. The spores must have drifting over the north side of the building all day. My side of the building? I came down to my apartment to try to call up the police, and my headache was rising to a feverish throb. I got through the door, and the moment I reached for the phone, pain flared in my head so bad I almost passed out. I've since tried three times and I can never get my hand up on it. The same thing happens when I try to get up and leave the room, I feel spines of ice tunneling up into my skull and my limbs lock up and shudder. The ants in their last moments crawl as high up the vines as he can climb. This is so the spore will spread over more of the colony below. In the end, the parasite controls the ant with an almost intelligent drive. God help me. The pain is almost blinding now, and a new thought has been rising up rhythmically in my head, like a record skipping. Up. 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 It's joined by an image of my office tower. It's taller than my apartment. The tallest place I can think of and although the bulge on the back of my neck is the size of a peach, the skin stretched shiny, and I'm dizzy and my eyes are cloudy, I think I can make it there. Up. No. I'm sick. I need help. The building pulses again in my mind. The cold wind. The roof and the sky. These images and concepts dull the pain momentarily as they pass through my mind. I think I can get there. Up. Up. If you live in downtown Chicago, I would get the fuck out. Playing with runts do you ever get lonely? Sometimes you wish you had a few friends you could run around and play with. Well there are three little runts who are just dying to play with someone, they'll play hide and go seek with you, 
but first you need to go into their home and let them out. Now in order to get to their home you'll need to prepare your mind, for they don't live anywhere you'll find in your world. You'll need the following items a children's camping lantern or a plastic flashlight, metal and maglets will not work, a glass of warm milk a bar of dark chocolate a red marker or some red lipstick a feather and headband a bowl of salt now that these are gathered, you must first prepare your house, block off any room you don't want these runs stabbling about in with a line of salt, it must connect to two ends of a doorway or two walls. There must be more than one open room for them to run around in, or they will get bored, and they don't like to get bored, however there must not be an open doorway or a window where the runts may escape into the world, or they might get lost, and mother doesn't like her children getting lost. It is important that all windows are locked or have a line of salt in their way it would be best if you used both. Now you must turn off every light in your house, you may only have one night light per room if you should choose any light at all. Unplug all digital clocks or LED electronics. Now that your house is prepared, you are ready to begin the Jumi to their house. You must wear the headband and feather, and use the red marker or lipstick to create a dash on both cheeks. You will drink the warm glass of milk, and eat but one piece of chocolate, leave the rest of the chocolate somewhere in the room you will begin the next step in, they will be hungry when they get to you. You will now take your flashlight and yourself underneath a blanket and you will lay with your full body underneath the blanket. You will look at the flashlight and turn it on and off and say to yourself the following poem. Dibble dabble nibble nabble knives and nooses poison apples, RLL come and take your from your cage. From mother's fingers come and play, you will begin to doze off, but you'll find yourself in the room you were in prior underneath the blanket, however the walls will look as if the wallpaper was skin, the black carpet moist between your toes and every step. A lingering stench like rotten food and piss. You will notice there is only one door in the room in your nightmare, in case you had any other doors you will notice they are now sealed. You must take your flashlight and leave that door, now you are in their house. You must find their room, their whispers will guide you. Listen closely, when you begin to hear nothing mother is near, mother protects her children. Should this occur to you she is near, you must turn off your light and hide underneath a table or somewhere. Mother will check underneath each and every one with her long slender fingers, you must listen for the scratching and maneuver around them in the dark so she does not touch you. Once you hear the wet sound of her fingers dragging back on the moist carpet and her moving away you must still wait. When you begin to hear the whispers again you are good to continue looking for them. Once you have found their room you will see them in a cage, simply open the gate and they will be oh so excited. Now you must get back to the room you started in as fast as you can mother will soon find her children are missing and she will come looking for them so you must hurry to the room and get underneath the blanket again along with the little ones. Turn the light on and off again and repeat the poem you said earlier to get there. You will find yourself dozing off again, and alas you will awake back in your room where you fell asleep if it worked properly, the chocolate should be missing. Do not turn any lights on, only use your flashlight. You will hear giggles throughout your house, they are all hiding, and you're it. There is one hard part in this in that they cannot be seen in your world, but they see you. You will need to follow their laughs, and when you think you've found one you must say the first two lines of the poem used prior, dibble dabble nibble nabble knives and nooses poison apples you should hear a laugh now that will slowly fade away, that is when they have returned to their home. Enjoy your game of hide and go seek, but don't take too long or they get bored, and they don't like to be bored. The Wanderer on the Tracks on Halloween of 1988, six teenage boys ventured into a tunnel on a local railroad. Only one escaped with his life in a photo. What resulted from that innocent venture was a two-year period of unexplained murders which killed off a good 10% of my small town's population. To this day, no one knows the true fate of the five boys and the reason behind the murders that lasted until the fall of 1990, except for me. I'm the lone survivor of the six who encountered the wanderer on the tracks on that dark Halloween of 1988 it was supposed to be a simple dare, nothing to it. Everyone had heard of how, every Halloween, people head into the tunnel and never come out. We all thought it was bullshit. Then again, we were only 14, and not very well learned in the way of the paranormal. All we expected was just some crazy dude in a bed sheet. However, what we found was much worse and what we did made the outcome 10 times worse than it could have been. I guess that curiosity killed the cat really fits when remembering this story. It was me, Steve, John, Andy, George, Bill, and Fred. Explaining our choice of costume is irrelevant. However, let us know that we all brought flashlights and Andy had brought a bucket to collect candy and foolish Andy. 
I remember your death so vividly it haunts my dreams to this very day and she does, too but not for long. We all had dinner at John's house, as it was closest to the tunnel. After that we played some Super Mario Brothers on his nest to pass time until it was dark. When it was, we all departed to complete the dare we so foolishly accepted. I carried a Polaroid to show everyone what was really in the tunnel we left when it was considerably dark outside. Most of the dads were parading their seven-year-olds up and down the street getting candy before it got really dark. There had recently been some kidnappings in the area, but we didn't expect to meet the suspect, so we thought we would be safe. With each step towards the tunnel it seemed as if it got darker, and when we arrived there, it was pitch black, and it was pretty much only us and the older trick-or-treaters outside. We all stopped at the entrance of the tunnel for a moment, realizing that we may not make it out alive. After waiting one more moment, we hesitantly stepped inside, turning on all of our flashlights. No one really wanted to do this. We felt this more and more as we went deeper into the tunnel. It was weird though, usually a tunnel ended around 500 feet, but it seemed like this one went on for miles. We went on for what I want to say was another 3000 feet. That's when we saw it. At the time, we had no idea what it was. If I had a choice. I would wish that I never found out what it was and what it did the fuck is that? Bill asked, half whispering to the rest of us. What we saw looked like a girl that had covered herself in dark paint or makeup and had on a plain old nightgown. She was holding what looked like a rod, or staff her back was facing us beats me, Andy shrugged. Hey, he yelled at the thing before throwing the bucket at it. It clanged off of the creature and rolled to the right of the track. Suddenly, it made the most gruesome noise in the world as its head rotated 180 degrees to stare back at us. I hastily took out my Polaroid and shot a picture of it. I put away the camera and shook the developing picture before putting it inside my pocket. Everyone was frozen in place looking at the creature, seemingly paralyzed. Soon the creature lifted the rod and threw it at Andy. It was horrifying and amazing, seeing it throw what we now knew was a spear with such dexterity, as well as doing it backwards. The spear struck Andy in the chest, dead center in the sternum. His ribcage collapsed and blood sprayed from the entry and the exit. His spine snapped, and he crumpled to the ground. The blood-splattered spear was stuck in the ground a good 40 feet behind us. It was only a moment before we actually thought to run. We didn't even try to save Andy. I turned my head and saw the creature ripping open his chest, tearing muscle and organs apart as our dying counterpart screamed in his death throes. It seemed like the creature wanted to separate flesh from bone, as that is exactly what it had done. Andy's flesh and innards were scattered around his skeleton and a pool of his blood. It was coming for the rest of us now. Bill was the next one it caught, eviscerating him in the same manner as it did to Andy. Then she got George, and then Fred. It was me and John left. The creature was so close we could feel its putrid breath on our necks. We both heard its demonic growls and screeches as we just barely escaped its furious grabs for our costumes. We kept on running even though the lactic acid had built up so much in our arms and legs, and our breath was ragged, and we were so damn tired. Soon we saw the end of the tunnel. Somehow, it was morning, which was so illogical, but John and I were both happy to see the light of day. Suddenly, I heard a trip and stumble. John had fucking tripped. We were outside of the tunnel and he tripped. I didn't even need to turn my head to know he would be gored and gutted. I ran a safe distance away behind some trees near my house. His screams echoed through the neighborhood and awoke several families, wandering outside to see what was happening. Everyone who went outside all saw the creature as it tore apart John. When it was done, it swept its eyes across the shocked citizens of my small town and let out a deafening roar that no man or animal could create. It then dashed back inside the tunnel, and everyone ran inside their homes, including me. For two years after that, the people who saw the creature were found disemboweled and skinned in their homes. Some people tried to move, but I heard them say it was like they were chained here. The creature was holding everyone here, keeping everyone who had seen it captive in this town. I'm the last surviving person who saw the wanderer on the tracks, and my time is coming soon. How did I last this long? I don't know. I bet it's teasing me, torturing me, making me shit my pants every time I turn a corner. It's taken a hold of my life, and I can no longer function like other people. I can no longer go out in the dark. My windows are always closed, the blinds always down, the doors always locked. I've tried to kill myself multiple times, but I can't. It won't let me. 
Recently, I've been hearing the dying screams of my dying friends. I've heard a bucket clanging from outside my window. Tapping on my front door at night. It's a sign it's coming for me soon and then it's coming for you. Quake 3 bats were designated based of an artial neural newwork they would affect NY thing to figure out the best way to do things they would wiped in which adding the ones that to skating the the didn't the longer they played the more they would learn about you, figuring out your patterns, and this would apply towards other bots as wheel for all intents and purposes they were one of the first learning a Alina game when I found this adult bot on Arena Semer on my prating server just to have 16 bots face Koch Chan and over to see how good they would get. Set the server up 4 years ago, T's been running the entire time, I forego out there. I'm gonna crack on them. Oh my god IP? I feel like losing. Hum say I just checked on them but for some reason will bowl or just standing still I'm gonna tie changing the map I was sizing through a maps A. Eh? Lumatically but I guess it goes stuck or something. Could make sense in not fully buying into this but what you said is true, the only winning mo in Italy for them is not to play. They land the only winning move was not to play your precious AI has gone on stroke, what now puppet master? Maybe they have commented that the best technique to survive is to make a piece and to stand there for an etmity, waking for a purposed or solution. Perhaps they think that a 0.0 KD ratio is better than that statistical inevitability of a 1.1 in all other situations. They know when to fight and run, such as low health or weapons that can't win the situation for them I just change the map and they keep standing still. I have a programs that traces player movements on the server and their Haral stand now they're gonna Dowie Quake 3 Arena and see if Tay Lum back on WO at back on the server give me a low minutes. The Upmate Cernal strategy developed over 4 years nobody dies if nobody kits. They've achieved something we couldn't. World Peace. If they had achieved the point where no tactics were usable against any opponent they might just. I bet they all kill you the second you enter, because you threaten their coexistence. In 100% sure that it a human joined they would all even the teammates, would kill the human just because they disturbed the peace. I actually really hope those bots kill the dude entering the server, and then go back to being at peace. That would be proof they hit a point where they stopped killing each other. Hey server guy. Place a new bot. Let's see what will happen to it. Disturb the peace run the balloons will force them into a new endless war. I don't know how to add new hots, I think I have to delete the owl log for one of the existing bots. On that note I should check those after I'm done this starting up Quake 3 now, we'll report back in a minute if they kill me. Okay that was pretty fucking wind I joined the Shavit and the hot steel just stand there, but the hicked up thing was they would rotate to look at me, I walked around at itty height and they all start looking at me so I grabbed a railgun and tagged one of them, they all ran for the nearest weapons, took me down and the AVR crashed wop I don't really know what to say about this. Team killing fuck eared? It was a teamless deathmatch server. Which made all the weirder when they didn't attack each other and went straight for me. Reload it back up and see what happens. In wiling to be the bot's memories were erased and if you load it back up they will be back to their normal shiz. Oh god, I just checked the owl logs. Each hot has a separate one they're each 512 me. I wanna believe show me proof. They're not those kinds of logs, they're tactical logs based on what has worked and what hasn't worked in battle. For all intents and purposes their memories man it's 512 MB per bot 16 Borz's age of information the Sam Santier fuckers should be glad I haven't decided to delete them for taking up space on my hard drive. June 15th I woke up this moment and immediately reached for my left arm. There was this awful, a wool itching sensation. I felt like it was coming from under my skin. Have no idea what is Bert seems to have stamped now. Hick is warm to check you but telling me to see a doctor. But Etal's just itching Zygarash just a bit under the skin of my arm. She's so sweet, though. For once I got up and she was right there, next to me asking was alright. Usually when got up she's already you gardening, and I have to say good morning to her out the window like that it is but there's something to be said about waking up next to someone. Maybe it would have been better if she hasn't though, seems I've sir her into a tizzy. I'm so lucky she's here. June 17th reminder go to Candeline shop to my MW. WR had an oh and the itching seems to be dying down. Not sure why, June 19th the itching has gotten way worse, I had less self-restraint I would have clawed my arm up by now. It's not constant, but enough to really make getting anything done. As soon as I mentioned it to Hita she took a nosed tease not my choice whether or not in the doctor now we rushing out to the chem to get me something as soon as I mentioned anything just cropped what she was doing and ran out. I tried to work on my writing today, but I just couldn't bring myself to finish anything. This itch was so annoying. I think it spread up my arm, too. 
I just ended up watching TV all day today I saw this documentary about a philosopher called Hobbes. He believed in something called a social contract that people aren't kind to each other because it's in their nature, but that is just considered socially acceptable. That dorp down we're all just humble monsters looking to fuck and at her. He was a pretty grim tello, but I can essay ha point. Ha's saying that it's not really up to us, that deep down it's human now or to be aggressive, it's genetically pre-programmed. I don't know though, when look deep down, I don't really feel anything morose or dark. I do dot bt there's anything boo unbeneath hide skin thank god we can overcome things, ch. June 21st Jesus, fucking, Chris Sue I went to the Dr. Odzi and Alarek an hour and a half in the walking room. This old man gave me his newspaper. When I smiled at him, he just sort of looked forward. He must have been on a plot or something but it stuck with me for some reason so I get into the doctor's office, he looks at my arm and tells me we have to go through this whole ordeal of getting an x-ray. He says I have to wait a couple of days, but when I told him how much of a bother was, he agreed to move things around I was at the machine made me a LL always hated these things. When I was younger my brother stole a bag of costrum me, and for some reason that made me mad enough that I ended up breaking his arm. He had to get an x-ray, and the whole time I was waiting for him to come out, I was scared. For him and for me. I wanted him to be okay, but also didn't want him to talon me. In the end, he didn't he led, said he fell down the stairs. This confession's a lit late, but only just remember Sony, BM I get home to FND I've already missed a cow from the doctor. When I phone him back, you know what he says to me, bugs. I have bug eggs, inside my arm. Seriously, I got a cut in my arm a few WA acts ago and get spider ages in T he says there's no worry about them hatching or anything TD act not on my tongue tie need and are out the best way to roll this and will get back to me. Seriously, fucking Eggus. I told Hilda it was just a rash. June 22nd knowing there are spider ages inside mess ready made the itching goo down. I think it's nest, these little things living inside me. These fute creatures forming in me. He does this make me woman? I guess I am pregnant. I can almost feel the eggus mung around in my arm. Hilda sprayed the ice black bugs in the garden hurting har flowers today with pesticide. I felt like running in and waving them, my babies, my babies. I would yell. It feels like my arm is a huge ocean, and the eggs are file boats. I can write peacefully now, I know everything fin. That's not stopping Hilda from worrying though pointing June 23rd I'm trying to keep my arm as still as possible. I remembered this Bible verse Claude, your by G and my boat is so small I'm going to be nicer to the eggs. Hita insists on putting this lation on my arm now, she's such a worrywer. Seriously, ill per, but I can get really annoying sometimes winting is a lot easier now these spiders in Mara S pretend try tack to me and the is pretty GM and fascinating in a towel the doctor phoned me today but I didn't answer. June 24th used I ordered some hubs today. June 25th I went into the doctor again I can't avoid the calls any longer. The eggs are such an inspiration to me, now. I've started writing a new story, horror, about spiders. They're such a cool symbol, now. Think about it. The Partect image CT these little lamble creatures that everyone seems to hate. There's even an evolutionary disease, arachnophobia, that makes you scared of them. It's genetically pre-programmed that we fear them. I looked for the old man in the waiting room nothing. Maybe he's sick. There was this other patient there, this dat guy, who got out his cigarette, ready to light NGH, there in the ICR. Luckily he regained his wits and put them away smoking, Atus disgusts me the doctor gave me these weird pills, I think they're meant to break the eggs down. I start taking them tomorrow. Goodbye my little pretties. I feel bad about losing them, I can almost feel them in my am the seeds of all have to hide the pills from hide if she owned out her compassion will make her throw a m. June 28 t woke up to Hilda this morning. She was awake, looking at my eyes. I could look into her size, and they seemed infinite. Nat deep they seemed like some sort of optical illusion a trick. They went on indefinitely. Ike she had reached some 8011 of profound wisdom, a summon bonum liwan amazing way to start the day I get up and had to hide a jump. 
I felt the eggs slipping around inside I went down and found my book by Hubtex Lead Gullinero was railing on the door where we wiped our fell, Melly and patiently opened it up and let the bed. I didn't reading it till later, till was done wiring. I don't want my work to be too heavily influenced by his frizz the chapter, long note of everything my tears dense told me. I think I've given myself an artificial intelligence, or some kind of higher understanding now. The buys, they know things. I should listen to them more often I read the best chapter of the book today. I don't even want to go into tea here such a dark pulley to everything this guy has to say, I love it. Hilda asked what I was reading, and I just said it was some journalist. She smiled and went to sleep. She never really listens, I don't think. I looked over at my pills, and decided not to take them. June 29th I thought about that man again today, the one who gave me the newspaper. T. Sal Hobbs, he didn't give me the newspaper out of kindness or anything. It was just a social contract. Either that un he was done with that's why he didn't say anything he didn't do anything is also obvious now we all have the deep impassioned need to us this whole onus and set interest. Take away 9-11, and social norms, and we all go back to the jungle. I don't touch any more, I let myself feel every ache and twinge. I adore it now. I adore the. They're inside, I've embraced it. I imagine war. They say and sometimes listen to them I wonder if they'll bear hatch? Today I woke up and Hito was there, but still asleep. There isn't as much wisdom and profound insight in her eyelids. I stayed there, unblinking a while. She didn't wake up. I was up first, for once. I had one eye cabbed by opening my pills, and using them all down the tail tea made this pretty lying pink foam. The egg will eventually go away oh, maybe they'll dissolve into my wood? There's a crespy though. Or, maybe my body will reject them? July 1st Hilda found out about Hobbs this all moon at dine. She asked why the W.O. man, and told her because everything he says in the hari, well, they just lit up balancing har fork in her hands, she starts talking abu. Kerwar or some shit. She tells me about Jeremy Bentham and deontology and situate in ethics and al. It was really cute, watching her run her mouth off. I can't really remember anything she said I was tolling my yes the whole time though. I think it was funny. Image the ages in my yes, rolling around with me. Say was bothering me. She was a lot recently. I hope I got one of those pater things in my eyes call can see the CGG. Then ITD always be with me. After a while I just stopped nodding and continued eating. Hilda looked at me a moment, then asked about the ick, smiling, remained sile ale while I told her the food was good eel was okay. I laughed to Meisel. There's your call, I though. Where's your denim now? July 3rd the rancid eggs rattle and turn in my veins with the tides. With every beat my heart sucks them towards itself, culling to them, and then pushes them back out. Like a mother teaching her child how to ride a bicycle re in them is steel there that I am steel holding onto them, and then lay go. Selling them venture of into the chchs of my tiz. I am imes think I can leave them gusting through my veins, squeezing through the tighter eros of my vessels. If I look towards my wrist when I feel this I think can see them. Little lumps that disappear back into my skin. I am a nursery the chids's bother made m y workshed, it's bellow, but the man can build anything ll create and moans with the listing of my body. T8 lopping me from working. My ick has become hide as father's and eptrusal need to keep winning about the spiders, about society, about the monsters, but the moaning, her father's voice say from the chair, puling me back. I have to today I saw Hilda tum to me in the garden and sme. She had been working for hours camely tending to the happy plants and towers she cares so deeply for. I remember a time when even the prettiest tower meant nothing to her, but she made herself care when she decided she wanted children. It was that is right. When she came back from the homeless shelter, tired and confused with palm nail of sand she dom and her frat trace I couldn't stop looking the soil on her hands. July 4th Social Contract Day Today, the 4th of July, the day we celebrate our independence, I first met Hilda, three years ago. Eight or a few months, she had nurtured the writer in me, and we had our first date. We celebrate the day we met rather than our first date, I remember the day, we both met at the soup kitchen. I wonder it's still there, or Hilda goes to a different one? 
I haven't volunteered for months. Too busy, I suppose. She celebrated this agreed standard contract by giving getting me this big box of books. A manual Kant, Germany Batham LL. A big book of ethical philosophers. She said she was excited that I was getting into philosophy, and that she couldn't wait to read my work now. I caught the veiled insult there. This sort of proved that she hadn't really thought much about this. I had only started reading Hobbes couple of days. I tried my best to conform, but there was only so much surprise and gratitude I could summon. The whole time I put on that smile, I could feel the eggs squirting around my face. They made my smile shake, and the comers of my mouth twinge. I wonder if Hilda could see them. I wondered if I cared. I kept thinking, show me your hands. There must be dirt under those nails. She's been working so long and so hard show me something. Let me seal July SCH couldn't work today. Hilda's fucking father, his hands can't support me I can't work on any other chair though it's like he engraved his eyes in that chair staring into my back, ripping open my flesh so I sit on it with its short leg I sit for hours I sit for days for fucking days. The eggs feel different like they're twitching. July 6th I type softly now, the eggs are in my fingers, leading me to wherever they may lead I love it. I have to type awfully though, or I'd love my powers. It crushed them. Those books did come in hand. I've used them to prep up the chair, the one Hilda Sauter made me. Now it's in Bay Tulbalance, and I can continue my work. Nog holding me back, concept Hilda Lesef. And the damn doctor stopped calling me. Every time she wanders in to check on me, I can't help but feel like Wackmixon. Justice me work, woman she has no idea no ideal what witting about low could she. Still I'm inning my inner bit mess, the social contract, later and harder to abide by. She isn't helping with her her fucking her fucking. July 7th today I woke to a miracle. The eggs are gone, but in their place in their place, my god are the most beautiful spiders. I can feel them, their tiny legs. I can feel them walking along my muscles, under the skin. skin.tzmzng. It's incredible slike raised a thousand chakran, Lisa bore them for mantis, and they were bomb, bv. They never let me Lisa nurtured a part of Miss A that's now fully bloomed. I L God Camdollar. To walk in and ask me how I am amazing I woke up this moaming in Hillisid tombed instant she asked tolls wrong tiny tuck to the T-O-W-U-Z excellent the Lassinu heist skull hot you ought you could jalur trough when that failed you infected my garden. The plants are lovely, she's done's great job looked at point do it when where withern waken you mandiri am near the sand the ants, they walk on my skin each, but on opposite sides. My skin is the gravy well and pinch the vans. I move a spider over to where the ant eyes. So they walk on top of each other. Saw an amazing feeling. My inside now matches my outside. My inside matches my outs del I wonder the spider will tear through my son and decur the ant. I hope so. July 12th it's almost finished, my masterpiece. It's amazing, it's in the shadow of Hobbes. I had to overcome obstacles like the damn phone, and Hilda's father, and Hilda and Hilda and Hilda how's working going? The doctor phoned, you should go in. How are you feeling? Plant a flower with me. Leave me the hell alone. I'm working, I'm working damn it. Thank God for my kids, they're the only things keeping me here. They're whispers of confidence, they're soft touch. I can feel them gently, sweetly slip along my body. The tickle, it's like a feather, like embracing a cloud of snow. It's fantastic. I feel like they're there with me, every time I breathe, they cling onto my teeth, they ride my eyelids with each blink, peek out of my fingernails to check up on me. And then there's the gentle, playful tugging. The nibbling. It's okay, sweetheart. Eat my heart out. Ha ha, ha 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 ha. July 13th and I'm so sad. I'm so fucking sad. I'm so, so, impossibly, incomprehensibly sad. Hilda she would try to understand sometimes. But she doesn't, because the sadness the sadness is in me. It's deep down, it's genetic and incurable. The spider's not in my veins. They crumple together and restrict blood flow, they give me a tourniquet. Like they're suggesting something everyone feels this sadness, but not in the same way. 
everyone feels it that's why no one can understand it. It's human nature, it holds all of us back. Don't bother with it, ignore it. But I can't, I can't ignore it. A black, heavy blanket has been draped over our happy garden, it has been for several days. Good God, it's hard to breathe. It's hard to fucking breathe. The air is so thick, and my lungs are filled with inherited this. This sadness, this anger, it was passed down from father to son in my wretched fucking genes. And I shall pass it on to my son. Hilda holds my hand, smiling innocently at me. Her ignorance makes me hate her. The bugs tumble into my hand as she holds it, and I pull it away. July 15th how the doctor was wrong. They aren't spiders. Well, they aren't just spiders. There are millipedes, I see them walk under my skin, like a stream with feet, flowing up my blood. Rivers in rivers there are others, too. Ants. The ants and the spiders fight, my body is a battleground. The millipedes pass like zeppelins over the red seas where the other insects do battle like and waste away for hours, staring at my arm. They're in all of me now, sometimes I can feel them pushing each other into my stomach off a cliff they push each other into my acid. To be digested, to be turned into me. I am the mother ship, the imperial mother zeppelin. I joyously watch outside as my wife to be toils in the garden. It's about to rain. I grin a huge grin, and count down the seconds. I applaud the heavens when it pours. I applaud Hilda's patience with it as it comes down on her. Spoiling her toils, spoil the toils. It's hilarious. It's karmic. You ruined my toils, and now the zeppelin rains down that's not pity I'm feeling. It's eagerness July 19th the doctor phoned again today, one block the number. Hilda isn't sick, is she? July 20th Hilda saw the books propping up the chair, and went out and got a prop when I was asleep, as a surprise of sorts. Now I don't have to rely on them, she says. The books are like the chair, when leave them on the table, they stare at me. But they don't tear into me my insects protect me, my shield of bugs protects my back from their talons. July 20th, night I woke up at about 2 am, and turned to see Hilda. To see not just with my own eyes, but my inner eyes. Her skin is soft, but her eyes are shallow. Her hair is like smoke, which floats just above the pillow, but her tongue is simple, and flaps inanely as if in a steady breeze. Her fingernails aren't covered in dirt, but I imagine her insides are. Like how the creatures of the earth are in me, the earth itself is in her. It must be, she tends to her flowers so often. Her happy, happy flowers she told me, they're not simple. She talked about photosynthesis, and the biology of plant life. How bugs rely on plants to survive, and vice versa. She said she saw a David Attenborough program that said plants were the masters, while bugs were the servants. What does that make her? The earth must be in her, a cut, or bruise. She's full of mud. I can tell by her ideas. I sat there a minute, and thought about what to do. I decided to start writing this. Has she seen it? I wonder? The drawer was open slightly. Maybe she did? She's been acting the same though wonder a thousand wonders. July 22nd last night I stared at Hilda again she brings out the worst in me the anger I k a deep down and dang down how can she pulls out with her LHL my skin today until I net I wanted to put some of my spiders on her plants. I squeezed, but there was nothing. None of them came out. They like it in me I was staring her, and I thought about the worth of human leery. About the pain about things she couldn't possibly understand. I can't help these things inside me they re there. I didn't put them there all didn't's human nature to have them. These dark thought this sadness, and anger. It's just a sucking social contact that my parents signed on my behalf at my bif. I thought about going to the sleddy peeking up a khiwo odd high and wiling hewlett rancid why I decided in on the book like I wonder all those creatures up there are as ike me aslam. It's in my two kong blood today I ignored hill at nothing the shugles up you. She doesn't www? Fire I will peek to WY's new deal with the shell break and shoe how to deal with it, how to live without me. I ate before her, and spent the day pretending to write. I tossed these books chew. They were tearing into my back. July 29th I made a good joke today Hilda said she wanted to talk, 
for us to sit down I looked her in the eye and asked if she'd rather w ant in the garden she said she'd stop working the made me happy w yuki more on bay heard on my good for her pmt kuld we spent airplay with hill road hobtex i do the wasps flutter around in my bull eye there aren't any but i imagine if there were i wo dot ld love it two dotted mail me whole choppers fluttering around inside me i dump and they'd plummet into the ick pool onto the battlegrounds and the arts would plumb them Facts kill rat by piling onto them and giving them Harakai W elf lift they did me skin ul 7h w if while and dama? We if they huma dan mon die in my brain? What if they destroy me? July 27th my children lux earn in the need end. They mock h luwe h ids if they will melu call on her. They're climbing in they pucks and pull tray land shethem to as if she were the heart and the very atmosphere the blood. She the center of me. The sun that feeds the plants which sustain the bugs. Dole depend on her or are they telling me something? Do they want me to do something else? Did you had the latency? Hid? Are you going to get me sent to Jai? Are you there, Hilda? Julie think the spiders have started to spin their wobs inside me. Why muscle and fat and blood no longer sown to be enough for them? If I'm breathing out silk without noticing like when you lair out a mag in the winter I don't think my sick will net or th.gh weight I should inclinating and mealy may or amino longer rough for them? Can they possibly lie one? Kai them? They were born in me, though how could they out without me? How could the millipedes, aider creeping along my bones and wading through the tar in my lungs bare walk upon the earth? And the Karth, I am the center. How could they that without me? It would be like me. Trying to walk the streets of China or climb Amo Dotantan. I'm not made for S.ch places. They must blinced me, or Oxa, they would have starting teening out of me by now. They would have starting coming out of me if they didn't need me. August 1st it's over. Hida asked me what was wrong and I couldn't stop laughing. The last foul days I have been playing a game with Har sending Har Ahmed messages of action then boredom. It was M. Crossing. I would spend time smiling to myself in my whiling moan thucks by X and tall mother in a lonely food I can't help her, but she stood up and she looked at me with those eyes. Those eyes that looked all the way through my head, the tornadoes, the wormholes. She told me Thash loved me, but that to stay with her would be to do me a distance. That she was damaging me, and that could help it add was trying her apart. She said she was sorry, so very, very sorry. I remember in the care. Her telling Mel could do it a year later my first normal was published. Har helping me financial, emotionally. Where the fuck did that Hilda 207 she idol ukel be with T he has time show she loved me, and she left I threw my typewriter cut the fucking window. I be dot med the pages. I lay in bed, feeling for the bugs. There are so many of them, and they all console me. They embrace me. I am more whole now my head. It's so hot. I can feel this horrible, unpleasant warmth in my forehead. I knew they would do this, relied on them, counted on them and now they're killing me. I need the pills, I'm seeing the doctor today. I know they would do this. My chlorin, my boat, my seal. August 11th I went in to see doctor today he said he had been trying to contact me for Wakanu and to WL me man land uching my head taily to say my piece, when suddenly we were wrong about your x-ray. I looked up in theme look me this when by my which was with he's their w airy thing will l putin ultima lilthaw called me why cut grass at the time. I sat there a moment, and let myself breathe. My thoughts calmed, my headache was gone, and the vapors disappeared. I looked down at my wrist. I don't feel anything. Not you and blood. Everything's gone. Everything's gone I let the desis ion and waited for a bus I was for the bus. Home with brothers, parents went out, woke up to mother screaming my name, figure they had come home already and I had done something, went to the top of the stairs and listened, scream again. Comma went down the stairs, screams coming from basement, call for mother's name, silence, open basement door, someone runs up the stairs, shut door lock it, and she begins pounding on the door and screaming again, run back upstairs and hide under her blankets and try to go to sleep. Ask mom how she got out of the basement last night and I apologize, she was never in the basement. Cleaning up banquet hall after a wedding reception, stacking chairs so I can vacuum, glance around to make sure I got all the chairs, I stop at what I first assumed was a chair, 
instantly feel cold and get this weird feeling on the back of my neck, chair is not a chair, looks like a black figure with its knees bent to its chest, figure slowly stands up, must be 8 feet tall, red eyes, horns on its head, blink a few times, it's still there, turn around and nope the fuck out, go in about an hour later to finish my job, stare at the empty place on the floor where the figure was, nothing was nearby that I could have mistaken for that thing. Be driving home from a late shift at work. Moon is out, still a very dark night, live roughly 30 miles outside of town with my cousin, driving along the interstate for some of the trip, take my turn and start the last part of the drive, 12 miles of dirt road that leads back into the woods. Only have two neighbors who live right next to the road I am on. No one for 12 miles, I am about halfway home when I come around a bend, going maybe 35, and I see some bright object crossing the road, swerve just enough to avoid hitting it. Have no idea what it is was. Was very small, replay making the turn and seeing the object a couple of times in my head, get curious, and turn around, come around the corner and see the object resting on the opposite side of the road, totally still, it's a toy, I get out and approach the toy. The forest is totally dark and totally quiet, still about 5 miles from home, 7 miles from the main road and nearest neighbor, it is a plastic toy train, just the engine portion of a train. I play with the wheels and wonder how it got out here, turn the toy over and see a dial, give it twist, it's a wind up toy, remember that this was rolling across the street. I drop the toy and begin to walk backwards to my car, too scared to turn around, ass bumps into the door. The door rocks, bumps into something and then settles. Something is blocking the door, before I can turn around to investigate, hear something you're off down the road, plotting like it's on all fours. Turn and see nothing. Get in my car and haul ass home. Never saw that toy again. My cousin believes me cause he sees weird shit too, I personally disagree but whatever. Here's mine, be me, 8 or 9, lying in bed not sleeping like a boss, start to get this really weird feeling that I need to look outside, ignore it, try to play that game with my hands where you pretend they're alligator monsters, fun for a little while but that feeling is really strong, eventually say fuck it and get out of bed to go look out window. We live in a pretty heavily forested part of the town so all I see is a bunch of pine trees, must be a strong wind, one tree in particular is getting beat to shit, get a weird feeling about it and then it hits me, it's the only tree moving, looks like it's having a seizure, it was really unnatural, it felt like it was an artifact glitch desu, suddenly the tree literally fucking flies into the goddamn sky and vanishes, I tactically shit myself and run back to bed and stay under the covers until dawn it sounds goofy but just imagine how pants shitingly terrifying this was to see in person. Okay, I will green text this time, have to split into more than one post zone. B13, living with family, never really experienced anything paranormal that couldn't be explained up to this point. Find out one day that grandmother on father's side had a massive heart attack and won't live much longer. Family drives to TN where they lived at the time. Grandfather moved after her death. Both aunts on that side of family are there. Don't remember how long it was before the hospital visit. In hospital where grandmother's in a drug-induced coma for the pain aunts and my parents go in to see her for a bit. Don't have a serious comprehension of death at this age. Haven't dealt with it much, just that people go away forever and don't come back my sister and I are told we can visit her, mom and one aunt bring us in. First this I notice as she's hooked up to a breathing machine that sounds like a stovetop percolator. If that makes sense to anyone else. Next thing I notice is she's really pale. She had a pink tone to her skin in life. I go over to her hand and grasp it. Don't want her to leave forever. Look up from the side of the bed I'm on to the wall opposite me. See two red glowing eyes turn from her to me from the face of a dog. Dog was huge and looked like it was made of shadows constantly moving shadows. I'd seen some big Great Dane dogs but this dwarfed them, had to be at least 4 feet at the shoulders, eye level with me at just under 5, wasn't growling, wasn't snarl faced, just a curious expression like, you can see me, immediately start crying even though this dog is of no threat to me or anyone else, knew it couldn't really be there, this was a hospital and they didn't own a dog, we didn't bring our dog with us, aunt tells my mom to bring us kids out of the room, that it was just too much for us to handle mom brings us out and talks to us about how grandma's going to heaven and she'll be at peace, raised Christian BTW. Didn't really get to say goodbye. Get to grandparents house and go to sleep on roll out couch with sister since everyone else took the bedrooms. A few hours before her death, have a vivid dream of a funeral and grandma's trying to tell me something, can't make out what, wake up and start bawling my eyes out. Mom comes out and tries to console me as I tell her about the dream, try to go back to sleep. Wake up a bit later when I hear the front door 10 feet from me open. 
Grandpa's back from the hospital. Grandma's dead and the funeral's in a few days. Tear up a bit as I fall back asleep. Later on mom has a dream where grandma's trying to tell her something about her TikTok and was pointing to her chest. So I don't remember this happening but my mom got drunk on her 50th birthday recently and told me this happened when I was like 4, at the time I was her oldest and I had a younger brother, we'll call him David, who was like maybe 8 months or so, we lived in an old ass house on the outskirt of Baltimore, so since I was young I would sometimes come in to sleep with them, especially because the door to the attic was inside my bedroom closet, I vaguely do remember being scared of this closet but then again we moved when I was 5 so I don't remember much. One night my mom wakes up to me crying at her bedside, she looks and I am actually crying over my brother's crib looking down at him, my mom asks me what's wrong, he's gonna eat David, what a non. Supposedly I shushed my mom at this point and whispered, we can't stop him so we need to be quiet mommy, then she heard a loud ass thumping coming from the ceiling, supposedly sounded like someone trying to hammer a fucking nail through the ceiling fast as shit, my mom scooped us both us and we slept at my grandmother's house about 10 minutes away. My dad came back from work the next day and went to check out the attic but my mom told me she refused to go up there for anything and I slept in another room until we moved. Is still pulling from my disturbing binder, worst thing I've ever seen? Been on the job for about 10 years so I've seen a lot of shit pample are really fucking dumb when it comes to walding is basically what I've learned watched a guy literally fry his eyeballs because he forgot his face shield and didn't want to get in trouble worse was a new guy eel cell dev a dave is a really nice guy but is fucking dumb as shit he has to be told every single day to follow even the most basic safety precautions me and everyone else is just counting the minutes until dave fucks up so bad he either kills himself or everyone else working with dev on a pre-tab project we've been working for a couple hours me holding Dave's hand the whole time I have to take a break, tell Dave to work carefully until I get back in hindsight this was an even dumber decision than I thought. This is what I was told happened to Dave a Dave has been welding for a few hours Dave's clothes are covered in shavings from the work Dave does not understand that seeing in metal spratom tiek to fabric can have to be picked off manually, Dave gets a really good idea, Dave turns his blowtorch off to kill the flame and uses the oxygen as a blow duster to clean the metal of his clothes Dave fay very proud of himself. Before anyone can tell him not to, Dave turns his torch back on and goes back to welding. The sparks start to fly, Dove, who has thoroughly originated his clothes with his blowtorch goes up like a fucking Roman candle, heard the screaming all the way from the break room, and I know it's Dave a sprint back in time to see Dave running for the fire extinguisher while on fire he doesn't make it that can Dave has a lighter in his shirt pocket, Dave did not listen to me when I told him to take it out tother explodes, Ava's clothes explode. Dave explodes see grab the fire extinguisher and blast what is lel all Dave with it there lot much, most of his lower face is crispy skin is hanging off of his chest and big strips histers many blisters, Dave is moaning the inside of his mouth is foley, Dave inhaled the flame she's coughing out all this fluid and pieces of his tongue the kitty lock on his lighter that she metal strip above the lint, has been propelled with such force that it has embedded itself in his eye, the fluid from it boiled and hewn the socket and anything it touched on his face. Dave is gasping for breath I know Dave is fucked Dave dies before the ambulance can get there, to be honest none of us really miss Dave. Alone one night, no way of going out tonight, raining like a motherfucker, decided to binge some old movies, haven't busted out the DVD player in ages, it's all the way up in the attic, some friends set up a little den up there a while ago, but we pretty much abandoned it after a week, never really go in the attic unless I need to store some useless crap at the little door that opens and drops down the ladder, make my way up there, everything is pitch black, it shouldn't be this dark since there is usually light from the street coming in through the window, see something big shift slightly out of the corner of my eye, jump like a fucking retard and start yelling, okay who the fuck is up here? Hadn't planned on anything actually being up here, nearly shit myself as I see this big gnarled up face looking at me, creepy eyes just staring right through me, every part of me wanted to get the fuck out of there, Notice the thing lurch forwards, dull light flooding in and giving me a better look at the thing's fucked up form as it moved away from the window, as it slowly reaches out, build up all the courage I have and swat at what I assumed was its hand and ask as loud as I could who or what the fuck are you? Slowly leans forwards, its face inches away from mine as it whispers read the first letter of every line. Last month, live in a semi-rural part of South Carolina, live on a long road surrounded by patches of woods and houses, about a 10 minute walk down the road I can get to a friend's house, had a pal pick me up and bring me there on his way to my friends, after everyone had gone to sleep at around 3 am I decided I wanted to go home, started walking down the road, no woods around this area, bunch of trailers all around, 
get about halfway to my house when I hit a dark spot surrounded by a big patch of woods on each side, I'm already a little spooked but I try my best to harden the fuck up, hear the spine curdling noise of leaves being rustled around in the surrounding forest, stop dead in my tracks and carefully listen and look around, can't see jack shit but I can hear faint crunching noises as if it's become aware of my alarmed state at this point my autism or whatever the hell you want to call it takes over all logical fear and reason. In my brain, I had concluded that some monster slash person was intentionally trying to spook me and that made me pissed, start fucking spazzing out in the middle of the road, what if the fuck do you think you're doing you piece of shit I swear to god if it should me hands on you rip your asshole a party on a girl loving cock mongler, just start screaming incoherent babble at what the fuck was there suddenly gain composure, listen for anything, silence, stand there in silence for ike how long, continue on my way home extremely flustered and confused, when I leave the dark patch of woods I actually see someone outside their house looking around with a flashlight, sees me and just looks at me like I'm retarded, go home, nothing weird has happened since did. Did I become the spook?